This illusion is called On Your Feet. Illusions are what I call my paintings, as I am scarred by illusion. It's only fitting. I've had this concept in my mind for a while, actually. It's only yesterday I felt I should try to put it down on paper. For some reason, I felt it wasn't time for it to be brought from vision to reality. But it really speaks to me in a unique and distinct way that the paintings I've done recently haven't. I loved it in my head, and the love has not ceased since then. And seeing as how I'm on the final three pages of this 9x12 canvas pad, yet I counted yesterday, alone I drew 13 concept sketches, all of which were magnificent. The competition for being painted is becoming very, very tight. I have so many ideas, and the paintings I've made have spawned their own ideas. That's also why I've held myself back from doing more than one painting today and yesterday to be sure i'm selecting concepts i can really do justice not that the others weren't done well but i want to finish these last few paintings as strong if not stronger than i began the legs walk on strong confident in an opposing direction and the upper body is collapsing which the legs appear indifferent to distorted the trunk of the figure is raw and yawning open. The arms dangle stiff and languid to the forefront of the painting. From the elongated neck sinking to the floor lies the dejected head of the figure, a passenger to the ride, the legs carried on forward, uncertain of its fate. Breakdown aside, which I think those are beneficial in playing on how someone else might perceive this, I am curious to know um, how, how does this make you feel? If anything, if so, what? Comment it. I really do hope my art makes people think and feel in some degree. So, suffering with the soundtrack, I can only think of Red Flags by Andre Day, who I hope returns to making music of her own since she's portrayed Billie Holiday. Um, Life Goes On, Tupac. I derive my own subtext to fit my narrative. I've cried probably very inappropriately to so many songs. Um, Holding On For Life by The Broken Bells, although that's self-explanatory. If you watched an earlier video or two of mine when I first began depicting the holes in torsos, the heads a few times I recall, then most recently the hands. I'm a type 1 diabetic and I'm not on a CGM or insulin pump, so I prick my fingers and inject in my stomach daily. I think that aspect of my life is manifested in the holy elements of my art. Albeit, I think that's only a fraction of my motive and inspiration to depicting things as I do. I just wanted to share that thought. My disease is frustrating, and my fear of doctors recently um, has <laughs> really played with my panic disorder, generalized anxiety, and maybe um, parts of that are interrelated with in my ASD. I need to find a new endocrinologist because I haven't been and it's due to my apprehension and the environment of the medical facilities. It's a very sterile, cold, I think, down to the people. They probe you a lot like how I think aliens do when they abduct people. I've also come to doubt they see patients as people, especially the ones of color, significantly more so women. Serena Williams, I think there was a story that my mom told me about. She had like a birth complication to convince them to listen to her. So I don't really feel like you're ever safe in a doctor's hands. Like there's really no such thing as safe hands. That's a fucking lie. And the thing with the whole exceeding 90 days, they won't just reassign me as a patient in that same building because there are other endocrinologists there unless I have a referral from a physician. Mind you, they have my info, knew I was a patient, and the only thing that changed was my doctor leaving after she had been rather flaky to me. <laughs> she was only my doctor for two-ish years, two and a half-ish years. Um, I switched to her after my other doctor. I think he retired um, just before the pandemic started, like in June. And I actually have never seen who the woman who was my endocrinologist in person then she went on maternity leave and canceled my telehealth appointments, like twice. So I had 
my prescriptions refilled through a different endocrinologist. Then she returned briefly, only to decide to leave the practice to spend time with her family. And I'm, my encounters with her were very brief, to be honest with you. She only ever told me I managed my numbers well and looked over my blood work. So she really did very little for me. <sighs> and all of that is a point that I neglected to mention because, you know, doctors can do no wrong, obviously. And it was also on the brink of tears fighting a panic attack. I was highly triggered I was highly triggered because I was traumatized by three of my previous general physicians. It started with my replacement pediatrician, then my general physician, who, rather than listen to my concerns, prescribed high-dosage pain medication when I had been experiencing the beginning of ketoacidosis. He, I don't think, even cared until after I had been in the ER for three days, six months later, with um, blood sugar numbers in the 800s, which, looking back, I don't know how it's functioning for so long, other than that I convinced myself, since nobody really cared, that it was all in my head, and I have tremendous willpower not to flex. It was not the ideal situation. The current general physician I have is very judgmental and has made remarks. Since my visits are so rare and infrequent, reminding you again, I, I don't really trust doctors. I fear them. I only go if I have to, as a last resort, at least. And I... Uh, she made a remark. The remark that she made was, at least I care about my diabetes because I see my endocrinologist more frequently. And I was like, I need that to live. I don't need to see a doctor, you know, to live day to day. Thankfully, I don't have any other conditions that require that. I take care of myself. So, you know, it was just really insulting. So they wouldn't make any exceptions despite me telling them it was cussing an emergency. And I'm like, no wonder people go home and die. Because it's just like, this is so exhausting. I've never judged people that abuse substances for whatever reason, although I do think some take their good health for granted, but I especially, you know, really empathize with people who do substances to cope. Like, I really, really, really get it. Not to sound like Grimes, like my Nana, for instance. She was a chain smoker, but I knew as a child if she didn't smoke, she'd likely have, like, a heart attack or a stroke. She was very high-strung. She would really get worked up, you know? And I consider her lifespan, um, 1931 to 2018, she had a lot to be tied about in that time frame. Yesterday, I was reluctant to call my general physician's office, who, as I said, I don't have a good relationship with, only to find they don't do referrals without an appointment, reminding you this is like cusping an emergency, and additionally, my doctor, when I was trying to make an appointment, was too busy to see me, as soon as they made it seem like I could be seen was late December, if even then, when I asked if I could get put on as a new patient with a different doctor, the woman, I think, intentionally tried to misunderstand me when I told her it was cusping an emergency by saying, no, no, doctors don't swap patients like that. Lady, I don't even want to go. I don't even want to be in this situation. So I couldn't get an appointment. And then for my endocrinologist's office, they refused to provide a referral to another endocrinologist because they're like, we just don't do that. That doesn't make any sort of sense. Um, and this is despite them denying to take me as a patient because of their exceeding 90 days policy when my medicine is a necessity, not a luxury. <laughs> my medicine is a necessity, not a luxury. I need it to live when I'm really not in love with living. And that's what really hurts about it is like, you know what, this is not at all fun for me. Life has not been like the movies and what people make it out to be. It makes me think of L. King, like they don't make posters of my kind of life, you know, like I'm never going to be America's sweetheart. I love that song. That's a great song. Sort of an anthem for, I think, a lot of people it could be. Um, the woman, I think, as a last resort via one of the women I spoke to on the phone so that I could go to an urgent care. These policies, I'm like, who, who did these, how does this make sense, you know? And people who are wealthy can abuse medications, you know, like the whole Elon Musk situation, which is why I didn't really want to make that Grimes reference. Like, type 2 diabetics probably really need that medication. And you're just like, I can use it to lose weight. It's really sickening, you know, because people who really need medication probably don't have access to it. Anyway, I got a sort of appointment at a clinic in my general physician's building after crying on the phone, having a panic attack, which is an improvement for me because in the past I've done that in the office, making me seem really unstable, you know. But, uh, gee shit. On another note, I watched Fab Socialism's video on better help. I'm glad I'm not the only one who's been bombarded by those on YouTube, even after I clicked the ads, asking not to see them anymore. I'm really over therapy. It never helped me. It just told me stuff I already knew and made me feel worse about my circumstances. Not unlike every fucking day does, but when 
I told my sister about the overwhelming ads from BetterHelp. She looked at me and was like, maybe you really need it. She owes me an apology, to say the least. I know a lot of people think things are wrong with me, but it is what it is. And I know I'll never get that apology from her. (laughs) Ironically, back when I did see a therapist, she often told me there was nothing wrong with me, you know, besides the autism, generalized anxiety, and panic disorder, along with some CPTSD. And she also thought I was on depression medication, when I really just have flat affect a lot of the time. But I'm not comfortable in a lot of places, so I'm not really my best self, so it's hard to explain. I'm really not making this sound better for me, but I swear I'm not a misery chick, you know? Not exactly. That's a Daria reference. I'm, I think I'm, I'm a connoisseur of human condition, just like everyone else. I think often that the U.S. should take a page from Germany. I think they care more about their denizens, since from what I've heard, they have more socialist laws, but still like remain a democratic country in general. College, I think there is free, although I don't know the parameters in depth, and I also have heard via Ready to Glare's video since she was born in Germany that child support doesn't stop when the person's a child. It would really only stop if the child tells the parent not to or when the child gets married and there's like a sort of like implied spousal support in that situation. Spava Socialism also pointed out the therapist can sort of reprogram a person to cope or adapt to society rather than try to seek out reformation, which I had not thought of, but that does make sense. Anyway, if you take anything away from this video, besides to cherish your functioning pancreas, it is truly art, and art goes on, so I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.